G'day, g'day. Welcome to Easy Jeezy, Mapping Me Breezy. Now, I've got to be really quick because I've got to meet someone who's delivering me some shoes. Okay, but in this guide, I'm going to go through uh, three quick ways of making some point maps, some really simple point maps. Okay, so let's get started. We're following on from where we left off last lesson. We've added our data. Okay, we've got our sample points. Okay, here in red. Okay, now in the on the contents panel, on um, the left-hand side, first thing you should be doing is right-click on it and you should be clicking on your attribute table. So when you add your data, it also adds all the attributes, okay? And you can go through and you can see all the different fields you have for that particular data set, okay? Air temperature, ground temperature in this case, uh, tree cover, all the, all the sort of stuff here. And basically, it will give you an idea of what you have to work with, okay? Now you can scroll back through, you can make this a bit smaller, you can make it bigger. If you want, you can click and drag and make it float, okay, like this. And then if you want to dock it again, you can just click and bring it back down to the docking button there, okay? So in this case, I think we're going to use with, we're going to work with uh, max noise values, okay, and uh, some land use, predominant land use. Okay, so let's close this down. We don't need that anymore. We know what we're working with. Let's go right click on our layer in the contents and go to symbology. Okay, if it disappears, you can just click on the little tab there on the right. Okay, now we don't want single symbol. First one we're gonna do is we're going to do graduated colors. Okay, to symbolize your uh, layer by quantity. So we're using numbers here. Now when you click on graduated colors, first thing it's gonna choose probably the first field. In this case, it's object ID. We don't want object ID, it's just the numbers in numerical order, nothing exciting there. So let's click on it and let's choose a different field. In this case, we're going to max noise level. Let's click on max noise level. Normalization is if you just want to normalize your data by population, for example, divided by number of people. But in this case, it doesn't matter. Uh, the methods, you've got a breakdown of all the different types of method. You can divide up your categories, your um, divisions, uh, but natural breaks jinx is a good one to, to stick with. You can read all about all the others there natural breaks. Uh, classes, okay, don't go too low. At the same time, don't go too high, okay? You want to get a nice spread uh, and you want to see it easily or properly differentiated. Let's go 10 in this case, okay? Uh, and you've got the color scheme. So we can drop down and we can choose our color scheme, okay? So on the left being uh, the lower values, on the right being the high values in this case, let's choose uh, red, okay? So you can see the light, the, the smaller values or the, sorry, the lighter values are for less than 19 decibels and the dark red is greater than 85 or 85 and above. Okay. Uh, so that's how we can graduate our symbols by color. Now in this case, it's not really very easy to see because the symbols are actually so small. You can actually go through on the symbol, click on it and, and uh, edit those one by one, making them bigger, but that's going to take us too long. Okay. What you should be doing click on the more drop down okay, format all symbols and then you have the size there for all symbols and let's make it it's a bit bigger 15 let's say apply and there we go okay so in that way we can see uh, really easily where there's a uh, greater noise in the darker reds and where there's less noise or quieter regions in the light the very light red okay um, so that's our graduated by color function. Okay, now you can play around and see that. Now let's look, let's go back to symbology and we can do it by clicking on the tab here or just right click or click on symbology there. Okay, disappeared, so let's click on symbology again, tab. Okay, uh, graduated colors, now let's do graduated symbols. So they're gonna be uh, differentiated by size. Field, let's again go down to max noise level. Let's leave it in natural breaks. Uh, classes, let's go 10 classes again. Okay, and you can see that now it's divided up by size. Okay, by size. So less noise, uh, smaller, more noise, greater. Okay, um, you can also reverse it if you want for some reason, depending on what your value is. So in this case, I've reversed it by right clicking on symbol and click reverse order. And you've got this, the larger circles mean less sound, less noise, and the small circles mean more. In this case, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to reverse them back. Okay. 
Um, and there you go. Now you can choose what your minimum size is. So it's going to say the smallest value, the smallest break is going to be three points. And let's make the max break or the max size a bit bigger, 26. So you get some good distinction between uh, the two. And you can see there all, the, all your values uh, and you've got those changes represented on the screen. Now, again, uh, if you want to change the colors, you can click on them individually. This is sort of sort of disappears a bit, this light green. So let's click on more and go format all symbols. And for color, let's choose, uh, let's say, sort of pink. Okay. Uh, and you can click apply. There we go. Okay, it really stands out. Put that there. Okay, so now you've got uh, your symbols graduated by size. Okay, really simple. Final one, I'm going to show you symbology again. Let's click on the back. Okay, I mean, graduated symbols is going to be by categories. Okay, so here you go up and you go unique values. Draw categories using unique values, one or multiple fields. So let's click on that. Uh, and in this case, now numerical values don't really make much sense. or don't often make much sense uh, for this. It's usually best suited for uh, strings or text values. So let's go down and let's choose predominant land use. Okay. So we're going to click on that. Oops, it disappeared. Symbology. Okay, and you can see what it's done is it's pulled all the unique categories here from that field okay, in the attribute table. So you've got residential, food and beverage, services, shops, formal, informal, tourist attraction, accommodation, etc. Um, and then you've got all other values as well down the bottom. So anything else that doesn't fit in those in those categories. Um, and you can actually remove those if you want, just right click. You go remove. Okay, don't need them in this case. And what it's done here, it's given a different color to each of these categories. Okay. And again, like before, click more, format all symbols make them much bigger, say apply, and there you go, click back. However, that doesn't really make much sense. It's really quite difficult to tell one blue from another. So maybe you want to choose a different color scheme. Okay, and you can throw in lots of different color schemes. But again, often color schemes like this are not really best suited for, for land use. That one works okay. Um, a good thing to do with this is actually use um, icons little symbols for it. So what we can do here, let's say residential. Okay, you can double click on the symbol. You can play around here, but you can go to gallery. You can actually look for an icon. So in this case, let's type house. But there we go, we've got a house. You can turn them all into houses. Okay, uh, let's say um, shops. Double click on that, same thing. Shop. Go and uh, let's go to the coffee one. Okay, maybe coffee is not a good choice, but it doesn't matter just for this example. Um, go back and you got your other ones uh, tourist attraction, double click, go to gallery, and let's type I don't know, mountain or something like that. There we go, that looks touristy. You see, these are all your mountains now. Uh, and again, if you click on properties, you can play around with the size, you can make it bigger, smaller. Etc. and change the sort of the color so it's not a green mountain, it's a, maybe a blue mountain. Okay, so there we go. Three different ways of making uh, symbol maps in ArcGIS Pro. Hope this helps. See you next time.